am pleased to welcome all of you today to this function for the release of our founder chairman, Life in Pictures. I thank you for consenting to our request and making time to attend this ceremony. I would especially root of professional studies, WIPs for short on this occasion, as our lives have revolved around WIPs for almost two decades under the chairmanship of Dr. Watts. WIPs was officially founded in 2000 by Dr. Watts to establish, maintain and promote self. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. You all know him as inspiring, visionary and, and an intellectual leader. But I have grown up seeing him inspiring not only others but us with his decision making. For me, he is my Baba, my mentor and my pride. And if I can be even a 10% of what he is, I know I will make him proud. Please. That's so warm, Aditi. Thank you so much. Something about the book. From the static environmental portraits to frame filling in your face portraits, from images capturing the wildcat's behavior to those conveying action, Dr. Watts has them all. Wild Angle has primarily showcased the frame fitting portraits moving in tighter, cropping out most of the body and focusing on the big cat's face, bringing the reader closer to the feeling that eye to eye, soul to soul connection with the subject. The experience of involvement is so deep that one can make out the texture of the fur, the length of its whiskers, the depth of its eyes, and the way its mouth turns up at the corners giving it an enduring expression. Now I invite Mr. Siddharth Mishra, chairperson of our School of Journalism and Mass Communication, to say a few words on how this book is a product of the integration of education with enterprise and share with the audience his discovery of Dr. S.C. E. Watts, the photographer. Honorable Minister, Dr. Watts, Dr. Agarwal, Ladies and gentlemen, it was sometime in the month of March that I happened to meet Dr. Watts. We have known each other for the last 20 years. He has been one of the few admirers at, amongst politicians whom I have as, have as admirer for my writings. Generally, I find myself on the wrong side. Uh, I met him uh, discussing uh, a book which I had planned, which is about to come out on the politicians of Delhi. And in course of discussion, I mentioned to him that I feel very frustrated in modern time journalism. And uh, first with the news, breaking news, these kind of things are somehow, you know, kind of upset my cycle as a journalist. I want to have a change. And a great, uh, I must say, the recruitment agency that Dr. Bus mind and body runs, you know, he immediately gave me the offer that you have to be here in this institute and uh, we'll give you a good place then. And I said, I have never given a thought about it. He said, you have two hours to decide and then you can leave this, this campus on, on your volition, but you will leave with my permission. And I had no option but to accede to his uh, request, to his, to his desire. When I joined the institute, the vacations, the term had ended, the examinations were on, the vacation was to start, and I really did not know what to do from 11 to 5. The teachers come there by, at 8 30, I said, I have been a journalist all my life, I can't reach off before 11 in the morning. So he permitted me that convenience that you can come at 11. I really did not know what to do for next, you know, I got a told him, I do not know what to do. And then for the discussion, there's a big portrait in his uh, office of Dhamadhan uh, Peak, you know, of sunrise and sunset picture. I said, these are great pictures. And I said that I asked him, as a reporter who was asked uh, somebody whom he has known as a politician all his life, that are these your pictures really? And he said, these are not only these are my pictures, but they are a drawer full of pictures. And then he showed, they shared these pictures with me. And I knew that I, I had a gold mine with me. And then I went back to the journalism school. I said, I want three students for this summer internship project with me. And these three students were not very, very convinced about what I was going to do. 
And the first thing they asked me, the certificate that you would give me, will you be admissible in the school or not for internship program? <laughs> So that's how the education system in this country is, because everything is about certificates, you know. I said, certificate you would get, and uh, I would ensure that your school also accepts it, but at the end of the day, you will feel very proud of the product that will come out. And for three months in that summer, we worked very closely, we worked very hard, it was a great learning process for me, and uh, what a marvelous job they did. Going through thousand odd pictures, sorting out pictures, and uh, you know, cataloging them, and then finally deciding on what to take and what not to take. You know, in journalism, news management is a, a huge issue. In newsroom, what news to carry, what news not to carry. And then, then you had a plethora of thousand pictures before you, clicked by the chairman of the institute, who was to decide that what pictures to go and what pictures not to go. So that was a great decision, big decision we had to take. And then a narrative to go with the. And the best part of the whole exercise was when they were to, I prepared them very hard for the interview which they were to hold for Dr. Watts. And uh, a student of first year interviewing the chairman of the institute. You know, and it ended up, ended on a one way communication. And they forgot about the question, they kept listening to the story which he had to tell them, like a grandfather would tell a grandchild. And it ended up as a marvelous copy, as we say in journalism. And this all has come together. It's an unusual book. The purists may not, you know, approve of this book. But it has great pictures and it has great stories for you to introduce you to what wildlife in this country is. And uh, I'm very proud of my student. And I'm, I have done several books, and I can say I'm equally proud of this book also. And I'm, and 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 I'm so grateful to the Ananda Institute of Professional for having taken me on board and given me the opportunity to do things which I want to do. Thank you so much. Now I invite Dr. Watts for author's music. Good evening, friends. Thanks very much for coming here. <coughs> I'm always with the presence of uh, our honorable chief guest and uh, my leader, whom I say he's a very kind, very generous, very helpful person who has always kept his head in pen high. And when I say he has kept his head in pen high, he has always kept the economy of this country afresh and I think it will go a long way in the history of this nation. When the posterities will look back, they'll say how many reforms in such a short period of four years. He's almost committed himself to his work and the manner in which he has a grasp of everything and the problems that people are afflicting from, which are afflicting which are afflicting people that he just touches each and every aspect of human life. I have seen him as a barrister practicing and become the Institute of Provincial Studies over the, his indebtedness to him for the very fact that he used to spare time from his Supreme Court practice, he used to come down to the High Court for us. This we can never repay. The manner in which he used to stand, perseverance is required, patience required, and the sharpness on the manner which used to grasp the facts in very short period. The, the lawyer will come, brief him for a short while, he'll skip, skip, a, skip a few notes, just skip a few notes. We thought he wasn't really given adequate time, but in that much of little time, he had this sharp intellect to grasp everything and the manner he argued for half an hour in the high court I was completely amazed and taken aback and I said, here comes my leader and my conscience said, he is the one who can lead India. And today's, whatever the economy will come to say, the future will, well, critics are everywhere. But I'm sure his name will go down in the annals of economic history of India and nobody can say that the amount of work that he does at the cost of his health 
it will not go waste, it will go long way in strengthening India's economy and in giving the world a world leader. He's a statesman, he is not a small politician. I am proud to accept him as my leader. He always keeps, as I said in the beginning, he keeps his head high and train high. Thank you very much, sir. I am really obliged and on behalf of all of you, I express my deep sense of gratitude. Thanks, Siddharth, for having to give words to my pictures. Because when I was going to Badagod, I could remember who the, the there was a Janu, you know, Mahavat. And the name of the elephant, elephant was Benhani, and there was another Sundargaj, and Ramdram was the uh, uh, was the Mahavat. Very interesting stories. Mm, two, two kgs of roti will be given to the uh, elephant in the morning. The wee hours in the morning, I, I used to get up early so as to be ready by six o'clock. And before the sun rises, we used to set out on our journey and to see that. Where, where to spot and where to go. The different times and uh, the elephant used to clear our way and the Mahavat also and the uh, forest guard also used to do a little bit of job but a lot, lot of scratches you end up with during the day and you wait and have patience with their bit bit you wait and you see what, what moment you are waiting for because of the flash of moment the, 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 the whole scenario changes and if you are not able to capture those moments, then perhaps this book would not be as interesting, as absorbing as it has become now. It has come very well. It will be in your hands. Now, what I took out from nature, I, I want to give it back to the nature. And whatever, whatever sale proceeds are there out of this book will be dedicated to wildlife preservation. And it is already on Amazon. So whatever sale proceeds are there out of this book, We'll be, we'll be going back to Tiger, Tiger, Tiger Conservation Fund. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. We all can see the great light here. But then may I request the guests on the dais to please unveil the magnanimous pictures waiting to go.
May I request once again Sri Arun Jaitley ji to please unveil the calendar celebrating life and times of Swami ji. The calendar has some of the rare pictures of Swami ji. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to bother you once again to address the gathering, please, sir. Dr. S. C. Vas. She is a dad, Mr. S. D. Aduwal. Family members of uh, Dr. Watts, members of the Vivekananda Institute of Professional Studies Fraternity and Friends. Let me at the very outset uh, compliment uh, Dr. Watts for having brought out this publication, which is a reflection of his own uh, preference for wildlife, almost a passion for it. And he's been working on this for a reasonably long time. There are many facets of his personality. I've had the privilege of knowing him for a very long time. He was a medical professional. Studied in one of the best institutions uh, for his medicine in Delhi, the Mahana Azad Medical College. Practiced medicine. There are not too many people at that in that generation in India who used to switch careers. These days, internationally, a lot of people do. He switched his career, got into public life. And from public life, uh, somewhere he picked up this uh, passion of setting up and establishing an educational institution. At that time, he was more closely in contact with me because for his activities in public life, uh, he was being penalized uh, with not being offered his allotment of land. He had to fight all the way. And I was not very sure as to what kind of institution will develop? Because that was an era where uh, <clears throat> private educational institutions were still struggling to establish their credibility. But in a very short time, he did establish uh, an institution uh, which had uh, a large amount of uh, professional excellence and uh, a preference. In that field also, I have a little suspicion from my conversation with him that his uh, expansionist ideas are not, uh, or desires are not over. He now wants to get into neighboring states and continue his experience of uh, good educational institutions in those states. And which is a remarkable thing because uh, we have a very large amount of population and a very large aspirational class, so more and more people want to get into good institutions so that they can be a better human resource themselves. And while doing all this, uh, he kept his passion for wildlife alive. So these days, multitasking uh, is one feature of uh, life where you continue to spend your time in doing more than one thing at the same time. In the good old days, it used to be called a diversion, which will take away your focus. But that's today considered a virtue. But the other feature is that uh, life is limited in terms of years. And are you going to be unifocused and only know about your branch? If you go to Siddharth Mishra's fraternity, 
and ask them what is happening uh, in Parliament. He says, no, I am on the crime brief these days. <laughs> so they only get focused uh, on their own subject. And one of the remarkable things which is now emerging amongst individuals that uh, you may achieve excellence in one field, but your personal bandwidth has to be reasonably wide. And therefore, having uh, a fair amount of specialization or at least an acquaintance, association, knowledge, and some understanding of multiple subjects is extremely necessary. So from medicine to education to politics to wildlife. And a short life only becomes more meaningful and more fruitful if through this multitasking you become multifaceted. Otherwise, uh, you will only remain uh, a crime reporter and know how to be and not know about other things. In fact, uh, this is one of the gaps which is developing in India. With the entire uh, gambit of information and knowledge now available for almost no cost in the various avenues that technology has provided us. You can't afford to say, I don't know this subject. Because when you are traveling, when you are relaxing at home, you can actually continuously, without any cost, keep acquiring information and knowledge about what's happening in the world. And therefore, I am quite delighted at the fact that uh, Dr. Watts uh, did not turn out to be the usual boring Indian politician who only knew limited uh, amount of his own focus area. Because if you did that, then you run into a serious trouble. And the serious trouble is that uh, there are many people when you, you must have seen it particularly in the electronic media when they are asked the question, irrespective of the question, their answer is always the same. Because that's the focus area they know about and in a roundabout manner they come to the same subject. About his passion for uh, wildlife, uh, this necessary involves uh, uh, an attitude of mind. Because if you have a passion for wildlife or if you have a passion for tourism, then you are necessarily getting away of, from the activities of the city which keep you occupied the whole day. You are getting away from the tension of the day-to-day -day life. You are unwinding yourself. You are seeing various parts of the world. And in the world, you are seeing the most beautiful part of the world. Because uh, these are areas which nature has gifted to us. And as uh, we expanded in terms of societies across the world, you then had a tendency to eat into what the nature had given. The place where we are speaking now must have been a part of the Raisina hill, which was a part of the Raisina village. Uh, you must have had, uh, fortunately, the British architects who designed this part of the city still get the lung space and the greens alive. But every time we do the development, we eat into some part of what nature is given. So that environment and uh, ecology on one hand and the economy and development on the other continue to exist simultaneously. But then we ended up creating an environment where it led to a destruction of certain areas also. This is one of the most gifted things India has. And if you actually look at the map of India, you are a country with an incredible natural resource. We are the largest peninsula, so we have the largest uh, sea line, coastline in the world. We have a very large number of forests with multiple uh, wildlife in it. We have innumerable 
places of uh, religious and cultural tourism. From the hills to various other uh, destinations, the urban metropolitan cities. There is everything that we possess, but because conventionally our developmental processes were slow, we have never been able to exploit it to this extent. Exploit it in terms of the world coming to us and visiting all these places. But as we hopefully grow, I think the capacity of the society to spend on uh, itself and attract uh, the focus of the world to these areas will also take. But having a passion for photography and then using your passion in order to publicize the rich heritage in terms of wildlife is an exercise that he has undertaken. I'm quite certain it must have been uh, every time he goes to the wildlife areas, the forest areas, and he tells me that he has almost visited every forest that conceivably the world has heard of that itself becomes a very exciting experience. And in these experiences, uh, you always uh, not only focus on the cliff, but you also focus on yourself, detach yourself from the song and dance of normal life, and uh, think for yourself uh, about yourself, your family, your educational institutions, the society, the city, and I'm sure uh, this must have been a great, enjoyable experience for many of us, a very envious one that you went through. But I am quite sure uh, uh, you have uh, many, many years and decades ahead of you to at least transgress into some other activities also. Uh, uh, and that is what is going to make your life more fulfilled and more fruitful. All the very best, Dr. Watts, uh, with the hope that uh, you live a very healthy, long life, and uh, what we have seen of you is still not the best. So that better days come ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. As always, you're blessed with the skill to capture the audience. Thank you very much. Uh, before I invite our vice chairman to present a vote of thanks. Uh, two gentle uh, informations, please. One which has already been shared with you, that all the proceeds from the sale of this book to be released today will go towards the cause of wildlife conservation. And so I urge everyone to buy at least one copy each and contribute to furthering of this noble goal. And secondly, a very, very humble request, kindly, uh, neither uh, are you permitted to, let me, I'm sorry to use this word, but please, to pose for either photographs or shake hands with our honorable chief guest and also kindly remain humbly seated uh, till the time our chief guest departs the premises, please. Sir. Uh, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I know time is of essence today, and uh, having spent so much of time, I think we need to thank our and words often fall short in terms of because once you try to, you know, thank Arun sir for uh, each time when he has come and blessed, you know, in terms of his uh, coming to the convocation at FIPS by blessing law students. Uh, also, in terms of, you know, sparing time. I know it's, it's, uh, you have many books on wildlife which are there, but at the same time the kind of encouragement that we have got today is, is something that is remarkable and, and something which will go a long way in terms of you know, encouraging us. Sir, sir I, I think it is my duty on behalf of the Board of Management to thank you, on behalf of Chairman Sir, other members of the Board who are present here, Krishanji, Ajayji, Niji, Manoji and others. Other esteemed distinguished guests who are present here, I know a lot of you are family and almost friends to us. And this is where we extend our deep felt gratitude for having to make this event a success. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. And we thank sir for you know, not just sparing his time, but then gracing this occasion by his benign presence. And we are thankful to each one of you for having made it today. May I request each one of you to please join us for 90. 
and that will be the end of the session. Thank you so much.